to give you some background on what this is all about. Uh, the Santa Susana Field Laboratory, which was involved in all this rocket testing and nuclear works, about 2,800 acres on top of a mountain plateau. And so the concern has been that the contaminants on top can migrate down to the communities below. Uh, in particular, there is a proposed housing development in a place called Beijing Canyon, just on the, um, how do I say this, it's on the east side of the property on the west side of LA County. Um, and Dayton Creek, which runs through Dayton Canyon, begins at the, uh, uh, in, at the Santa Susana Field Laboratory in a lovely little place called Happy Valley. It's not very happy because it has huge concentrations of contaminants, particularly perchlorate. Perchlorate is a very toxic material, migrates very quickly. It's particularly associated with solid rocket testing. And they had tons of perchlorate at the Santa Susana facility. Um, so the regional water board found that with perchlorate was leaving the rocket iron facility, traveling down Dayton Creek, and they would find it at the place where it's measured pretty much at the boundary of, of the rocket iron facility and this Dayton Canyon area below. So the local community, which is often very much smarter than the supposed experts and the regulators said, you ought to be measuring for perchlorate and these other rocket line contaminants in this proposed housing development. And uh, the agencies and the developer didn't want to do it. There was eventually an article in the Daily News. And so two days later, the developer went out and tested for perchlorate, only because this article had appeared in the paper. And they found astronomical quantities, astronomical quantities of perchlorate in the creek bed. Immense. Um, now, we all thought that it was somewhat likely if you've got it on top of the mountain at the uh, place where it's leaking into the creek, and we're finding it in the creek above, and then you're finding it below, that the two things might be connected. There's been some resistance to drawing that conclusion. Um, and I'm hoping that we have a new start now that we'll look at that more carefully. So the community began to press also for some radiation measurements. Um, and there have now been some tests of radiation. Again, all these tests are done by the developer, so this is some question of the independence of the measurements. But I'm going to show you what the preliminary measurements, the original measurements, were like, and ra raise a few questions for you. Um, uh, date, the Dayton Canyon area is, the f is on the other side of the field lab from where the nuclear activity worked. And so I'm first going to show you some data from right close to where the nuclear activity was. And that is a, another proposed development which you've heard about. Hold on, Dave, you don't have, are you ready? I'm ready. Is that up? Yes. Cool. This is Runkle Canyon. Runkle Canyon is on the Simi Valley side, pretty much below where the nuclear side was. Area 4 was the nuclear area. There's no direct hydrologic pathway, rainwater doesn't flow right over it, so however this got there um, is intriguing. It's, my guess is it was airborne releases because they did, did a lot of burning of radioactive waste right at that area and that radioactivity would then fall out below. The red line here is what EPA has measured as the local background. This is for strontium-90. Strontium-90 is a fission product we associate with nuclear activity. It has a roughly 30-year half-life, dangerous for about 600 years. It mimics calcium, so it goes directly to bone. Some of you may remember during the atmospheric nuclear weapons testing that they were collecting baby teeth to monitor strontium 90 and the uptake of the teeth. So it's a, it causes bone cancer, le uh, leukemia, other things. It has a tendency to concentrate in the body. So they measured for strontium 90. It's one of the main fission products you would associate with the, atomic, with the rocket iron facility. And so the red line is what EPA has determined to be local background by measuring in places nearby um, that would have some fallout, but hopefully not much uh, from uh, the rocket eye facility. You could have stuff from bombs, but not from rocket eye. The blue are the individual measurements of the strontium-90. And you'll see that they're vastly higher than local background. So there seemed to have been some added radioactivity to Runkle Canyon, added presumably by rocket eye. What's interesting is that these measurements are higher, uh, uh, generally, than what we're finding at Dayton, which is what you would expect, because Dayton's a bit farther away. Remember that the, we have wind blowing in two directions at night and day, and so you would expect concentrations also to be somewhat higher when you get closer and more dilute a little further away. But the intriguing question, when we're going to take a look at, for a moment at Dayton, 
And I first had gone and looked at Daisy Canyon West in the ch uh, chart uh, that you saw from uh, DTSC. They had a, uh, a map of Dayton Canyon. So the Dayton Canyon West area is the area that's closest to Rockadine. So if there were a difference, you would expect that it would be somewhat higher in Dayton West than in Dayton East because Dayton West is closest to Santa Susana. And that's a fact that one found. So this is Dayton Canyon West, and this is the average concentration, mean concentration of cesium-137. And this is the EPA-approved background. So it's about twice background. Pretty interesting. Large number of measurements, and they're coming in about twice background. Uh, this is the maximum concentrations that were measured for cesium-137 <coughs> at Dayton Canyon in general, and the uh, uh, maximum found in background is reported by EPA. There was one background measurement that we were told that EPA uh, viewed it as some kind of anomaly, but. Uh, uh, and took it out. But the reported range from EPA is as high as this, and here's the peak. And about a third of the measurements taken at Dayton Canyon West were above anything said to be the peak measurements in background. So again, an indication of some added radioactivity, presumably from the Santa Susana facility. Here is the, uh, the mean concentrations when you take all of Dayton Canyon into account. And you'll see it's still well above background, but a little less so than Dayton Canyon West, making Again, the thought that there's something that is localized. They did some Geiger counter measurements, which are kind of stupid. You wander around with a counter, it looks good on uh, science fiction movies, but it's a pretty poor way of testing for radiation. But nonetheless, what's intriguing is that the, this is just some notes for myself, you don't have to read it, I'll go show you a couple of charts in a moment. But um, they were measuring in Dayton Canyon about 15 to 20 microgram per hour. But the measured background off site is uh, that Boeing reports year after year is about five micrograms per hour. So they were, even with their Geiger counter test, coming in about three to four times background. Again, background is because you can't get away from radioactivity. We still have some in the environment. So you want to see if what you've got near the site is greater than what you would have away from the site. And the Geiger counter readings indicate the same as well. And again, what's intriguing is the Geiger counter readings are higher in Dayton Canyon West, closer to the facility than they are for the rest of the property. And then these are those same charts you had seen before from cesium. And then strontium is kind of interesting. Um, if, you, it take, if you want to cook books, it's not that hard in environmental reports. You say that the readings are non-detect. The layperson thinks that means there's nothing to detect. The technical person says, what detection limit did they use? And the uh, contractor here used a detection limit that was vastly above background. The McLaren Hart background measurements were about 0 0.005 picocuries per gram uh, had the detection limit. The developer chose to use a detection limit two orders of magnitude higher. That was, if it was 100 times higher than background, you still couldn't see it. So they had a lot of non-detects. Even with that detection limit, uh, a number of the measurements, three of them, were still so high that they were above even those high detection limits. And they came in about... Um, 10 times background. And uh, so even the strontium measurements with that high background was showing that there's some strontium showing up at the facility. Uh, David Carey, you here? Still? Your brother lived up Dayton Canyon, or very close to there, right? And he had some kind of a small ranchette with um, uh, farm animals and so forth. Marge Weems, who lives up Dayton Canyon, has a goat farm. Uh, many of you have gone to Orchid Ranch, which is right next to this place, which is a functioning uh, fruit farm. This is all agricultural activity. And under those uh, standards, which are what we call rural residential, this level of cesium-137 is, which is a number, would produce a risk, according to the EPA, of um, uh, about uh, 140. 40 times the normal one in a million risk that they aim at. And the peak measurements were at about 3 point, uh, 350 times the one in a million risk. Uh, put differently, these are outside the acceptable risk range. You're supposed to aim for one in a million, you can go no higher than one in 10,000. The cesium measurements for the people who are already living in Dayton Canyon with their ranchettes, like your late brother, these levels, according to EPA levels, would be outside the acceptable risk range. And for the strontium figures, the three that they were 
able to measure, even with their bad detection limits, those likewise would be at um, uh, about th uh, 370 times the normal one in a million risk or way outside the, ten, uh, the one in 10,000 risk. Uh, 